So I also believe that number three, you could very much play my role as Jimmy Conrad's doctor, because in his questions to you, I can hear him asking, why don't I think like that? Why am I not as optimistic as this guy? Uh, so that, that, that's my two cents here. But uh, yeah, d- d- look, don't don't get me wrong. There's been there's been um, hard moments. Uh, you know, don't long- let him do it, Kenny. Do no. not no, let but- him do it. <laughs> What is up, everyone, and welcome to another exciting installment of your favorite podcast, Jimmy Conrad Needs a Doctor. I'm Jimmy Conrad, and I'm here with my favorite doctor, Dr. Lee Hancock. What's up, Dr. Lee? How are you, Jimmy? I feel like we've done this introduction so many times because I hear it in my head, and, and it just keeps going because I miss you, and it's only been three days since we cut our last <laughs> podcast. And the podcast, I think I've been healed, everybody. I've been cured of all my ailments. <laughs> Dr. Lee now misses me more than I miss him. No, I'm just kidding. I miss you too, Dr. Lee. So we have a very special guest coming on today's show, Kenny Cooper. I played with him on the national team. I played against him in MLS. He played for Manchester United, 1860 Munich. He's got a crazy career, and I can't wait to get a little bit more of a deeper dive into what makes him tick and how he dealt with the success and failures throughout his career. Are you as as excited as me, Dr. Lee? I am because I remember watching him play. I remember when he came back from, I remember when he went to Manchester United. I remember when he came back and played for Dallas. And so I've heard a lot of great things about him. So yeah, excited to have him on. All right, let's get that man on right now. And now he is joining us, the man, the myth, the legend, Kenny Cooper. Great to see you as always, my friend. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. Okay, so first question, Manchester United. You started at Manchester United to really catapult yourself into your professional career, and you went at a pretty young age. How old were you when you went over? I was like 18 turning 19. I was out of high school. Okay. All right. And so were you ready? I guess is my big question, because that's a big jump from going to playing in high school here in the United States to going and playing for Manchester United. You know, um, <clears throat> I'll say I'll say yes and no. I was the biggest homebody mama's boy you've ever met in your life. So England was really far. It felt really far at the time. And so that was the big challenge for me was just <clears throat> going overseas, being a long way from my family. But I felt from a soccer standpoint, I felt confident and ready. And it was, I mean, really a dream come true. And um just an incredible experience, an amazing education. Uh, you know, those are really like my college years. And so it was uh, an amazing introduction, uh, I guess, to the professional game, to be around all those, I mean, my heroes, really. I was just thinking the other day, actually, or today, how th- the crazy thing is <clears throat> when I went over there to train, I ended up in an inner squad scrimmage with the first team. And like two weeks prior, I was in Dallas, I think it was a summer, you know, I think I was maybe playing it like in a men's league or something to, to keep fit. So it just, you know, my life just changed so quickly. Um, and, you know, it, it, I feel like it served as this great, like, uh, it, just, it just shows how quickly things can change, how quickly things can take off for you. <clears throat> um, and so, no, man, I could just go on and on and on about my time there. Absolutely loved it. I think that's a great point about, I think this is what people don't understand about being a professional and moving into some of these environments is it really does change that quickly. You know, there's not a movie buildup or anything like this. You, you, you are playing at some level and then you change to the next level and then that's how it works. And adjusting over there certainly is, is no easy task as well. How, how did they do that with you and for you? Is there a steward that puts you with a roommate? How do they, how do they pop you into something when you're 18? Yeah. Well, you know, again, being a huge, mama's boy homebody the, the good thing for me is i went into like a host family's home and so mm-hmm. called called it digs and had an amazing family who um gave me that family feel and yeah. uh, there were a couple of those uh host families like on the street and in the neighborhood close by jonathan specter wasn't too far away um he actually ended up in the house that i w- when i was there for my training stint i was i was staying at his house and I'm sure wanted to be in that one. I ended up with another family, but they were incredible. Um, 
And uh, so that, you know, that was great for, for my comfort. I, I don't know if I would have been ready to move into, you know, an apartment by myself at that time. Um, and so it was good to have that family atmosphere. But it was definitely, you know, a, a big shift from, you know, playing high school. Like, you know, I'm not sure my club team ever trained more than twice a week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was playing all the time. So the professional lifestyle was, it was new for me to go yeah. from, at to training every day and I think what was really different for me was um I was used to like in high school I feel like I had these like long full days like waking up early like you know probably get my homework done real quick get to school you know a long day at school you know maybe uh club practice or you know school practice homework at night so it was like a really long full day I went from that all of a sudden all of a sudden to like you know having that training session every morning going hard but then having you know, a long day to yeah. rest and recover. So that, that part of it was different for me. I think I had to, had to really learn how to, um, how to be professional and to do the right things, you know, off the field so that I could be ready to go again the next day. Yeah. So I've got a big question with regard to that first team training that they put you in that inner squad, Yeah. because I'm pretty sure if I was out there running around with skulls and gigs and all those, I mean, they would have had to check my shorts because I would have had to wipe myself. I would have been you know, so afraid of that situation. And I don't know if I would have risen, especially at that age, out of high school, to be prepared for something like that. How did you play first? And, and how impressed were you with the level of those guys in particular? Yeah, um, you know, again, man, it was, it was a dream come true to be over there. And um, and I, I want to say that I was there for two weeks and started with like the under 19 team training and then ended up with the reserve team training. And then um, I think right before I came back home, I was, I was in this inner squad first team scrimmage and Vanessa Roy was on my team, Ryan Giggs. And Jesus. I mean, it was surreal. You know, these are again, heroes of mine. I mean, my brother and I had songs for these guys that we would sing when we were playing, you know, FIFA at home. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was, uh, it was awesome, but I, I felt, confident i felt capable um i joke that man my i i come from a home of um just eternal optimist and i joke that my you know my my parents brainwashed me to believe that my dreams were possible uh, and i say it as a joke but you know the reality is i just had a lot of um a lot of support from home and um you know, I, I think it was so important, you know, as I was jumping into my career throughout my career to have that. But um, it was it, it was an amazing start to my time at the club. And um, man, it was an amazing I was there for two and a half years and I just learned so much. But, you know, I really tried to be a sponge while I was there. But um, no, man, I loved it. I, I, I'm not sure I was that nervous. I just I, I think I was determined and just excited and it felt confident. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a huge United fan, so I mean, Jimmy knows this. I mean, I'm, my heart is hurting right now. I mean, uh, but and as I'm sure yours is, if you're a United fan, so we won't go too far into this because I'm certainly <laughs> not going to talk about Jimmy's Newcastle. They're, they're, I guess we're actually right. winning games, Lee. So you, you can go, you can talk about it if you want. We I think like we've that. got a Carabao Cup come coming up pretty soon, so we're going to look for that big win. <laughs> it's Civil War. It's Civil War. Cavani is a great signing. Oh, massive signing! I think that that's a. A great signing and and some, some people are bashing it but it's like got three young you know guys that are going forward that could certainly learn under him you know it, i think it, if there's a chance that you know falls to someone in a, in a game that's a guy that i would want on the end of it and i think you know yeah. he's proven he knows how to score at the highest level and i think he'll kick on and score a lot of goals for the club yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping so you, you mentioned optimism which is <clears throat> uh, jimmy has described you a number of times as a huge optimist, great attitude. And I, I imagine that being 18, 19, you go to this massive club and you're there for a couple of years and then you go elsewhere. What is the, how do you maintain that as you go into your next adventure? You know, you, you come home and it's like, okay, I'm not there, but I have something else. God, that had to play a massive part. And how, how did you move through that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a challenge. And, you know, my career certainly had its ups and downs. And that's why, you know, the foundation of my life is faith and family. And I, I have leaned into that throughout my career, throughout my life. And that those are the constant constants in my life. When the game's not going well, that's what I lean into. And um, 
some, you know, some of my best, you know, my favorite moments throughout my career came soon after some of my biggest challenges. And, mm. and, uh, and I think it served as great reminders, you know, going throughout the rest of my career and will forever serve as a great reminder of how things can really quickly turn around in life. Um, but even my time at United, I, I got off to a really good start. I was in the reserve system my first year there, um, scored a bunch of goals. And my big goal was to um, <clears throat> join the first team for their preseason tour in the States the, my second year. And I came home over the summer, <clears throat> was re- working really hard on my fitness, went back. Um, I want to say I started that second year training with the first team, ended up back with the reserves, I think, and then ended up like back on the first team training field, like the day before they were going to the States. And that was my, that was like my big goal. That's what I was aiming for. And I'll never forget. I remember even the stretch I was doing when Sir Alex Ferguson came over to me and told me that I wouldn't be going on, on the tour. And so it was a huge disappointment. It was a huge challenge. And the rest of that year actually ended up being a big challenge for me. I ended up going out on loan to a Portuguese club, didn't play a lot. Um, came back to England. I went to Oldham Athletic, didn't play a lot. So that second year was, uh, was hard. It was really hard. I went back yeah. to United for my third year, was back in the reserves and uh, just kicked on there and had a great time before I um, moved back home to Dallas and, and started my domestic career uh, in Major League Soccer with FC Dallas. But, you know, it, that, that was just part of my career, ups and downs. Um, and so having that strong support system was huge for me and just always helped me to believe that, you know, the goals were right around the corner. The next win was right around the corner. The good times were, were coming. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I really believe in that and having just like a good team around you. Cause you know, you, you don't always feel the love from, you know, your coach or, or maybe the fans or even your teammates sometimes. And so I, I was lucky that my, my parents, my family, my wife, we met when I was over there been together for a long time. I was, I was getting a lot of positivity and and support, um, throughout my career. Okay. So I want to talk about this loan thing because it feels like when you go out on loan, the club has, they're just not buying what you're selling anymore. They don't really seem to believe in what you're capable of. They hope that you go there and dominate, then they'll have a reason to bring you back and play you. But it just feels like, and I'm saying this from a perception standpoint, when you go out on loan, it's kind of like, the last goodbye before the the final goodbye, uh, if you will, you know, and you went to these different countries and I'm sure it made you tougher as a person because you had to handle adversity and, and different languages perhaps, and still trying to fit in. And you're now this Manchester United player. So now you have these expectations from, from the, the players that you're surrounded with as well. Um, how did you cope with all that? Cause, cause again, I mean, I already talked about being nervous about uh, playing with the first team. I don't know if I'd be able to handle that, especially by myself now, because you're outside of that household that you felt comfort in and it felt very familiar to what you had back home in Dallas. But, but now what, you know, and, and what were you thinking then? Like I need to get out of United or, or, cause at some point there had to be some a push to have you come back and play for FC Dallas. Yeah. You know, it, it was honestly that, that second year for me was really tough. It was, it was challenging. And, and I looked at the loan, the loans I did as an opportunity to, you know, like you said, to go impress, to go really, you know, score some goals, make an impression and, and show that I'm ready and I'm capable um, to come back and step into an opportunity for the first team. And it went the opposite of, you know, what I was hoping for. Um, didn't see the field a lot, um, you know, was hard, it was, you know, it was challenging, frustrating. Um, but you know, it's just, it's just the way it can go. So I was meant to be at the, it was Academica de Coimbra in, in Portugal. I was meant to be there the full year and it ended up, it ended up being called short. I came back to United at Christmas. Um, and I remember sitting down with the coaches and, and them telling me, uh, you know, they were like, look, we were planning on you being out on loan, I think for the year. And so I, I ended up at Oldham Athletic, which was closer to United. So I was back living in the area that I was living in. So I was, kind of back in the comfort zone, which was good. I think good for me. And, um, and I went to Oldham and it started off well and then didn't go well. We had a coaching change like a month into it. <laughs> it, it was just, it, it was, it was challenging. It was, it, it was really hard. And um, so that second year was like, it wasn't a wash, but it was, you know, a lot, a lot to learn from. And, and some of the first like real adversity that I faced as a professional, um, 
because you know at United it was like it was like living a dream. The facilities, the players you were around, um, it, it was just such an an amazing experience. And they did such a great job at the club of like the amazing thing about Man United is that it's this huge global club, but it's a family club too. So when you're there, when you're inside of it, you feel like you're part of this family. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson really does have that like that fatherly figure cut, you know, around the place. Um, it's incredible. Um, and what they did a great job of was like integrating the, the younger players with the first team. So even though I wasn't necessarily trained with the first team every day, you know, you would see these guys in the cafeteria, in the gym. So it was, <clears throat> you know, I went from this amazing experience of like, you know, uh, I think like feeling like my dreams are coming true, learning so much, just like excited to being out alone. And it just like, just going bad, just going really bad. Um, so I came back to United, got back into, you know, that, that reserve system, my third year. And then I had an opportunity to come um, back to the States, back to Major League Soccer. And just at that point in my life, I just felt like it was the right, the right step for me to do that. I had learned so much. Um, and, and I think I, I felt like there was a good opportunity for me to go play first team soccer and take all, you know, these great things I've learned and, 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 you know, go start that first team career kind of thing. Okay, Kenny, I'm going to jump in here, Lee. I just want to know, because when you're telling these stories, and I'm sure Lee's already picked up on it, there seems to be some joy in your voice. Like, yeah, you know what? I was great. I may be a better person. Life is awesome. I just need to know now, as I listen, does Kenny Cooper get sad? Is that possible? It, absolutely. Man, I remember crying on the floor, like my early days at United. It, it, it was it had a lot of difficult moments, but my high school coach, who I'm good friends with, he, he has this great quote. He said, he told me a long time ago, he said, you know, good moment, bad moment, or good experience, bad experience, all good experiences. So, you know, on the other side of the bad experiences, I see, you know, the opportunity for growth and, and, um, and, and again, like throughout my career, I had, you know, by the grace of God, I had these amazing experiences. I was at United. I played for, played my hometown club with the national team with you, man, with, you know, in Seattle, but I've also had serious injuries. I've also been, you know, sent to like reserve games at 8 a.m. and left out of the squad. So I've had all these different experiences that I think, you know, at this point in my life, I really appreciate. And it's, I think, helped for my perspective and has created like an empathy within me that I feel like I, I've kind of experienced all these different things within the game. And I feel like I can relate to, you know, all these different players and what they're going through, um, you know, good or bad. Um, Jimmy, can we talk as if Kenny isn't here real quick? Let's do it. Let's do okay. it. He do is it. fantastic. I mean, yeah. I, I love even when he said cry, he goes, yeah, there were some times I was crying. It was crying. <laughs> <for him>. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think that's what kids who want to go play overseas or want to go play in college, they don't understand. You're going to have these days and they are all experiences and, and optimism starts at home. You know, we had Tom Beyer on, he talks about soccer starts at home. We've referenced him a few times about other things start at home. That plays a major role in, in how you take these collective experiences for two or three years and you will have hit some lows because I know what it's like for you guys over there. You're, you're on for two hours and then you're off for 22 hours. Right. Or, you know, give or take a couple hours here and there. And and that's a tough time to manage. But as you come back in here into the United States, you're still only 20, 21 years old and you are still striving to make a career. And so as you came back here and you have these these experiences, did you do you process those? Or you're just, just like it's it's in you. You've you've done it now. It's like I'm I'm I'm, I'm here to, to to make a team. How, how does that how do you put those into action? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I I don't think my dream of playing for United ever died, even when I left the club, to be honest with you. They're uh, signing players. They're signing just, veteran players. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I, um, you know, I fell in love with the club. My experience there was absolutely amazing. And, yeah. and again, like I said before, they were like my college years. And so <clears throat> there's so much I learned there. And so when I came to MLS, I think at that time I may have felt like, Hey, this is an awesome opportunity to get, get, you know, first team soccer, apply all these great, you know, lessons learned, you know, values I, that I saw in these top, top professionals. And like you said, I was only like 21 still at the time. Yeah. So I think I felt like an experienced player 
step, you know, even though I was like, at the same time, I felt like a rookie in MLS, but I felt, I think like an experienced player, like, man, I've seen some things. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I felt ready, uh, to step into MLS and, um, but, you know, it's funny, like I go back to, you know, I was saying how when I, when I was at United doing my training stint there only like weeks before I was in Dallas, like, you know, playing this like men's league, going back a year before that, I mean, I experienced this huge disappointment. We were playing the Dallas Cup, and that that for it. I, and I looked down the story. I told the story to kids so many times. I've done a lot of coaching uh, this past year, and it's one of my favorite stories to share because uh, it, it served as a as a good, um, I guess, preview for my career. So we were playing the Dallas Cup at the time. Dallas Cup was like that huge, big youth tournament. Uh, yeah. And um, my team, uh, Drew Moore was in my team. We had a guy, Shafiq Stimo. We had a lot of really good players. We made it to the Super Group Final. And, um, you know, nationally televised. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, that was like my first kind of, it felt like I was a professional, like my first kind of professional mm -hmm. experience, even though I wasn't professional. Uh, so we made it to the final. And I uh, came on in the game in the 60th minute uh, as a sub. And I hit Wait, who are you playing? Who are you playing against? I'm playing nine and fours. And okay. um, I hit the crossbar four times, oh. including, <laughs> including the last penalty kick. Oh, no. And it was, it was a night. It was a nightmare. It, uh, my buddy Shafiq actually sent me the vi a video, a YouTube video of it, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, the amazing thing is, you know, fast forward a year later, um, we were, I was back playing with my age group. I was playing up that year that we got to the final. I was back playing with my age group, and we made it back to the super group. And I, kind of out of that, I think, is how I ended up getting my opportunity to, to go to United. Um, and so, you know, I had this huge disappointment only a year later around the same time to get this opportunity to go to United. So it, it served as, as this good, like, again, like a preview for me of, like, you know, yeah, a big disappointment, but then like a huge opportunity. And so I think throughout my career, I kind of had that in my mind, like, hey, with the losses, with the defeats, like, you know, just stay optimistic. Just keep going, keep going, because it just, it, there's good things uh, around the corner. Jimmy, before you before you kick on, because I can see you want to ask a question, I just want to make this observation. Having listened to a number of you who have come on, you know, Jimmy, you have – your failures and you have an FU mentality, right? Of I'm, You're not going to tell me no. And it sounds like, Kenny, you've got a similar one, but it's uh, just from a different perspective, you know, almost like, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep going. And you may have that FU in there, but it's described differently from you. But either way, those failures have served each of you to, to propel forward into that next step, which I, I find interesting from, from all of you guys. And this in particular differently. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want to touch on that, Jimmy, but I think just that mentality of like, hey, you just keep going. And no matter what someone else believes about me, you have that internal belief, mm -hmm. um, you know, that it has to stay strong. Yeah. No, I, I wanted to show you some credit because and shower you with appreciation and respect. I feel like had I had that opportunity with Manchester United and then came home, I would have, I'm not trying to project onto you. Obviously you handled it with total class and went on to score 40 goals in 90 games for FC Dallas. And I want to get into that and kind of where it propelled you to get into the next thing. But I would have felt an ounce of, I didn't make it. I had my opportunity. I was there for long enough and I didn't make it. And I maybe would have came back and felt a little bit of shame, you know, and be embarrassed a little bit that I had this. And I, not that I squandered it because that, that seems like that's what Freddie Adu would do, you know, not Kenny Cooper, but, but it's just like, it just didn't play out in the, in the way that I wanted. And now I've got this on me. It's almost like this pressure on my back to have to perform. And, and I can't say enough about you coming back and having a positive mentality about the whole situation and still in love with the club. And then went on to perform great for FC Dallas that led to national team appearances. I was a captain uh, for the game that you scored your first ever national team goal. So I'm very proud of you for doing that under, under my watch as captain. <laughs> but, but what I want to get to is that you come back, you do well for FC Dallas, but there was still this pull to go back to Europe because you went to Germany to play for 1860 Munich. Why, why did you leave when you were doing so well in MLS? Did you feel like you still had something left to prove? Um, good question. Um, so when I came back to, when I came back to Dallas, I was there for, I want to say it was three and a half years. My first stint with the club was three and a half years. I played from again, uh, later on. Um, 
yeah, I think, you know, just at that time, I think I was just craving a, a new experience. Um, you know, it, it's so interesting. MLS has obviously grown so much. It's come such a long way. And I've said this a lot of times. I feel like when I was first starting the league, a lot of players wanted to go to Europe to get this like soccer culture, like fan experience. Um, where, you know, nowadays, man, just look at Atlanta. Look, you know, I think that that some of the atmospheres in the league, you know, are up there with some of the top around the world. It's, it's incredible. I went to MLS Cup in Atlanta a couple of years ago and I was just I was blown away. I was blown away. I was only out of the league for just a couple of years and it's just, it's so impressive where it's at. But at that time, I think I was, you know, just craving a new experience um, and just felt ready to go back and try it again. Um, I went to 1860. They were in second Bundesliga at the time. Um, but, you know, was, was a club with a, an awesome history and, um, you know, some, some other guys, uh, you know, some heroes of mine that had been there, Taylor Twelman, Josh Wolf, uh, Greg Berhalter. And, um, and so I was, it, it's a great city. I mean, great club, you know, it just felt like a great opportunity at the time. So, um, things were going well for me, um, in the league, uh, you and I played the all-star game together i think you know maybe right before i went over there um but i think at the same time i i was really wanting to make that world cup squad and i think i felt like around then like just that this move would help with that um and so yeah went back um and uh you know gave it another try yeah, I, I love that. I love the fact that you were seeking a challenge. And I think that's that's really important for athletes to continue to do and to be around the right people that will feed that desire. Because I think sometimes athletes get comfortable or they, they, they're thinking something and think, ah, I don't want to do that because I'm, I'm older and now what if it goes wrong? And I think that plays into your into your optimism. Um, <clears throat> and, and quite honestly, the relationships that you've cultivated with your with your then wife or I don't know where you were in that relationship yeah. and family, obviously. And um, so you go over there and now you come back. Is it the same feeling of optimism that you had when you came back from United? Did yeah. You, did you approach your career the same way as you started to kind of move into your second venture or what was that like? Yeah, definitely. I was, I was so excited to come back and, mm. um, you know, was a part of a really special year in Portland uh, for the Timbers inaugural season. And I remember Molly and I, uh, watching a video of uh, Timber's Army and just being blown away. I mean, you know, again, you talk about this fan culture and experience. I mean, it was there in Portland. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I was leaving, you know, this great soccer culture to go to, you know, that one. I felt like I was going to this incredible one and it yeah. was incredible. Um, it was so special to be a part of that, that season. And um, when I came back, you know, the, the rest of my time, in, in the league ended up being a really transient one went from, you know, one club to another. Um, but no, I was, I was excited to get back and just, um, I think just wanted to, to show that I can, you know, still score goals and, and be at the level that, you know, that I was when I left the league. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, you know, I was excited yeah. for that opportunity. Yeah. So, so, Kenny, I'm going to jump in here because I'm looking at your stats. Once you come back from 1860 Munich, you play for the Timbers, score a bunch of goals for them in the inaugural season. Then you move to the Red Bulls for a season, score a bunch of goals for them. Then you move to FC Dallas for a season and then the Sounders for a season. And then you had a, a brief stint with the Montreal Impact before it's, I don't know what happens. And so I don't think I've ever seen you announce a retirement. So I assume, as Lee said earlier, you're a free agent. You might start stretching. Manchester United might need you at this point. <laughs> Cavani's one thing, but we could all use a little Kenny Cooper in our lives. Uh, how has that process been for you? That kind of acknowledgement of, all right, this is, there's no real happy ending to the end of a career. I feel like when I think about the end of my career, which wasn't my choice, when I hear about other people, it's rare that you get that, that score the game winning shot in the final you know, to, to end your career. Michael Jordan did it for his basketball career and he couldn't even resist the pull to come back. And like, nobody wants to talk about his time with the Washington wizards. Cause it's just, you know, so, so if Michael Jordan can't resist, what, what hope do we have for the rest of us? So I wanted to kind of talk about 
how you've handled this part of it with grace because you have because that's what you do but also the, the sadness that comes with the fact that this window in this part of your life is probably over yeah you know it's i i was not ready to stop playing when it happened that's for sure so i went to i went to montreal in 2015 <clears throat> i picked up a knee injury and um missed the rest of that season it was a contract year for me option wasn't picked up and uh tried tried make it you know tried to make a comeback early on in uh or just moving into the next year the next preseason tried to catch on and make a comeback i'm not sure in that early part of preseason i was like really there yet ready you know coming off the injury um and uh and so you know, but I wanted to, I wanted to try. And so I was with Red Bull. I was with Kansas City for a little bit. Didn't work out. Didn't have an opportunity at, at either place. And then Jesse, Jesse Marsh, um, was really great with me. I was in the New Jersey area and he let me hang around and train with the, with the squad for a long time uh, as I was trying to get back. And I mean, I was trying to get back for, for a long time, trying to make a comeback for a long time and it just didn't happen. Um, do you think it was oh, yeah, a salary, salary, salary thing? I mean, do you feel like you're, there was like a salary or financial implication? Like, ah, Kenny Cooper's going to be too expensive. You know, look what everything he's done. We can't afford him. So you wouldn't even really get that chance. Because I always wonder how that works. Because it's, as being an aging athlete myself and going through that process, you kind of hit your peak. Aging, aging athlete. Can I, can I just hold on to this dream? Okay, Please, just ahead. let me have it. Ahead, Listen, I, I, have, I have over 40 leagues to play in and compete in, my friend. <laughs> All right. Those matter to me now. They matter just as much as when I was playing in the World Cup. I'm well, maybe not that big, but but, but when you come down the mountain, it's like, oh, this reality of I'm probably never going to get to play for my national team again. I'm never going to make the same amount of money. And it's this really harsh reality that punches you right in the face and you're never ready for it. You can you, it's like having a baby. You can read all the books you want, but you don't know until you know, until it's there, until you're living through it. And, and the baby stuff is cool. It's like this mo miraculous thing. And you can't believe there's like a mini me of you walking around, but from a career standpoint, it, it's, it's devastated in some ways. You have to come to terms with, with this part of your life being over. That's hard for me. And because, and I only say this because I, I want to explore a little bit of, you haven't acknowledged that you've retired. You've kind of let the door be open. I still see you training on Instagram and doing your thing. And I love you for continuing to be open to it. And I wish teams would be open to it as well, because I think you'd provide a lot of value, whether you're starting or not. The, the influence that you'd have in a locker room would be second to none. They should just bring you on as like a player assistant coach. I'm just throwing that out there for any, any coaches and teams out there listening. But, but I, you know, at some point, like what, when, when is Kenny Cooper going to be like, it's done, I'm done. And, and that might be putting you on the spot and you might call me afterwards yeah. like, dude, what are you doing that? Why are you putting me on the spot? But, but, I really just want to know because I, I, I find this part of an ath athlete's career very fascinating. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's, I was joking with someone the other day. I think I was like, you know, I, ne I never made this like official retirement announcement. And I was joking that, you know, one day I should, should do it and say that I'm, I'm never retiring. You know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so many players. Um, I mean, you know, just across other sports too, playing in their late thirties, early forties. And it's a bit of a tease to see that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I'm at peace with not playing. You know, I, I go back to what I said before, the foundation of my life is faith and family. And, you know, that, that's what I'm always leaning into. It's the source of my joy and my happiness. I don't need to play to, 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 to feel that. Don't get me wrong. I still, you know, would still love to, of course, but I'm at peace with not playing, and, and, and I love the game because I've realized in these last, in these last couple years, years, couple years, years how to play, how to play other avenues, avenues to enjoy, to enjoy it, enjoy it, and to put that passion towards. I've done a lot of coaching. It's been an amazing platform to share from the 12 years of professional experience that I've had, and to, um, you know, try to be a source and force of you know positivity and encouragement to, you know, to these kids who you know have have their own dreams and. Um, you, yeah, I've realized that, you know, I can still love and enjoy the game, but I'll be honest, like, you know, when I was playing, I think I, I always had this determination and I think I found so much joy in that professional pursuit and the games each weekend and, you know, trying to win and score. I'm not sure I realized that, you know, I, I would enjoy the game as much. I mean, I, 
I almost enjoy it more. I mean, I've man, I played in New York City with my brother um, when I was in Charleston. I started a, an organization. I was running pickup, and I've just connected and met so many people and enjoyed the game just through some other different avenues. And the best part of it um, is obviously the community, the the people that you meet along the way. And um, throughout my career, I said, you know, it was a really transient career. I played for a lot of different teams. It was hard changing teams. But at this point in my life, I appreciate it because I made so many friends, uh, people who I keep in touch with, connected with so many people. And um, and it's just what I appreciate. It's what I appreciate most, I think, about the game is just the relationships that you make. It sounds cliche. I'm sure so many people say it, but it's, it's the truth. It's the best part of it. You know, the, the lessons learned, the people you meet along the way and you stay connected with. Um, but I still love the game. I'm training all the time. Um, you know my hope i I think i guess i think to myself you know my my hope is if someone's looking for a drill skill whatever whatever it might you know help someone or you know spark an idea um but i love the game i don't need to play professionally to love it and um the training i think is something that'll always be a part of my lifestyle and i'm not sure like a professional surfer just stops surfing when when they you know when their professional career Mm -hmm. so for me I just love the game. I'm passionate about it. And I think I'll, you know, train and and just keep playing for as long as my legs let me. If I can summarize very quickly here, Debbie Downer, my co-host, likes to pull people down into his depth of despair as his playing days wound down a while back. I love your optimism and I can (laughs) listen to you all day about it. The second piece is, is now I hear him angling as an agent. To see if he can get you as a result of this contract somewhere as a player coach. So I also believe that number three, you could very much play my role as Jimmy Conrad's doctor, because in his questions to you, I can hear him asking, why don't I think like that? Why am I not as optimistic as this guy? Uh, so that, that's my two cents here, but. Uh, yeah. D- d- look, don't, don't get me wrong. There's been, there's been um, hard moments. Of, Don't you know, let him do it, Kenny. Do not no, let no, him do it. There's been hard moments and, and, and tears shed and questions I've had, you know. I, I, but ultimately, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm at peace with not playing. And, um, and and that's what made you fun to watch, quite honestly. I mean, as, as a, I, I, used to, I watched you play early in Dallas. I remember when you were a young player. So – quick on your feet for a big man and, and able to take guys on. And I think that was, in my opinion, part of the confusion with some managers that didn't know how to play you right, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you would agree with that, but no, a, a joy for me to watch you play. And, and Jimmy, I'm, I'm just having a, I'm just having a No, you sh- I was going to throw up a princess bride joke in there that I was Please. indoctrinated from that, from the pit of despair. Uh, you know, and so that was, that's a really deep cut on, on Princess Pride, but I love that movie and I love Kenny Cooper and his positivity. You're a role model, not just for the people that know you, but for everybody that's about to get to know you as well, because of all the special qualities that you have. So thank you for coming on, Kenny. You're the best. Thanks.